Hello class, so for this uh, video discussion this week, I decided to do video thread two, and I have some of my thoughts written down, kind of just to talk about and um, what I think about the subject. So with this use of this uh, week's reading, such as the article from the science-based medicine that was in our module, a lot of oncologists are warning their patients to stay away from alternative herbal treatments, uh, mainly because those who rely on these alternative herbal treatments are actually having a worse uh, survival rate or just worse recovery when it comes to their cancer treatments as we kind of all know the standard uh, cancer treatment is already a rough process and these herbal treatments are actually just making the process worse. Um, mixing standard treatments and herbal or over-the-counter treatments is also not a good strategy and it's a lot of in another article that I read as well um, by the UK Cancer Research Center states that uh, this is something that happened that is happening often where their patients are not really telling the doctors that they're having the herbal treatments as well as the standard treatments and what happens in the body is that there's this drug to drug interaction or interferences that um, obviously create these really bad side effects and affect um, the body even worse for example they stated that some um, Asian herb herbal remedies such as bilberry can increase the risk of bleeding after surgery or some of them uh, would actually make the skin really bad and very prone or sensitive to light and things like that during radiotherapy so um, doctors and oncologists are just advising their patients to stay away from these so-called herbal treatments and remedies that can um, you know prevent these diseases I think that after reading these reports and these cases from these articles and like the lectures that we saw, um, I think it's rational and fair to say that herbal medicine can be dangerous for cancer treatments and that there should be way more studies or evidence that can show and tell people, you know, this just stay away from that um, and kind of only stick to the standard treatment that has been put through a lot of um, rigorous testing. Uh, thus, in with this and kept in mind the media and uh should also kind of warn people a little bit more in my opinion about uh like the use of herbal medicine just because i think a lot of people assume that because it's like herbal and they can see it at a pharmacy um or they can get it over the counter that it's safe so I think the medical community uh, does have the right and is <laughs> is correct to be concerned because it's just, um, again, like this overwhelming amount of uh, cases and reports that have been happening to certain people, such as the girl with that died with the turmeric, as we saw in the lectures, that, um, you know, not only are herbal treatments being used just for cancer treatments, but also a lot of people use it for other um, illnesses and a lot of people or companies and, me and social media market these as a great way to prevent um, different illnesses. Uh, they also, therefore, should, I think, be more regulated by the government. When I looked into the FDA website, they still clearly state that um, vitamins, minerals, herbs, and dietary supplements aren't FDA approved to treat or prevent any types of diseases. So this is another um, example of just something that shouldn't really be so easily sold to people or just not a lot of warning or information um, given to the people who are buying and purchasing these herbal treatments. Um, so I think those are kind of my thoughts. I think that there definitely should, one, be a lot more government um, controlling into these treatments, and two, there should also, um, the medical community should, you know, be more concerned and possibly be more, I guess, aggressive with the way that they combat people with herbal treatments and things like that. So yeah, thank you.